It's like do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, which of course got turned into later on the very famous Blade Runner starring one Harrison Ford, um, which really defined cyberpunk as a movie genre. Um, you also have what Minority Report was also a Philip Dick story, um, and incidentally a much better story than the Tom Cruise movie. Uh, the ending kind of really threw that, even though Tom Cruise wasn't too bad in that film. Um, you also get a standard Darkly one starring one Keanu Reeves, which is also a Philip Dick story turned into this fantastic cyberpunk thing. For those of you who don't know, A Standard Darkly is about heavy drug use and the defining line between what is and is not real. Um, very fascinating story. Interestingly enough, Keanu Reeves shows up in an awful lot of uh, <laughs> cyberpunk movies. Things like The Matrix, of course, right? Big, big, big defining cyberpunk thing. Like, like, I don't know how you could get more cyberpunk than The Matrix. Um, except maybe Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> and for those of you who have never seen Johnny Mnemonic, it has the greatest monologue ever. The, the I Want Room Service monologue. Yes. Watch, watch this movie for this monologue, if nothing else. The rest of the movie, you can take it or leave. There is a cybernetic dolphin, which is kind of amazing. And, for the, and if a cybernetic dolphin doesn't sell, sell this movie for you, yeah. <laughs> You, you have, I don't know. You should, you should find something else to enjoy. Um, Japan, of course, loves them some cyberpunk. Like, being the super, super saturated technology culture that they are, they love cyberpunk. Things like Akira, which is, you can, can not get more cyberpunk than Akira. You've got these rundown, you've got these kid, biker gang kids fighting against the man and their super science, you know, where they're, Although it's most more genetic than cyber technology, to be perfectly honest, but that's okay. It's still crazy ass science that the man is developing to put you in your place. And they're like, fuck no, we're gonna ride our bikes and blow shit up. It's awesome. <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, and of course, <laughs> Ghost in the Shell, which again, which, which tackles more of the cybernetic uh, and, and where is man versus machine? Where is that line between what makes us human? And that's really a question that comes back time and time and time again in cyberpunk literature. It's where is that line between what is us and what is technology? Um, you know, you get that meld between man and machine. It's a staple of cyberpunk. The, the, and, and defining that point, you know, so you get cybernetic implants. You get... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, sorry, you get cyborgs, right, who are humans melded with machines, not to be confused, of course, with androids, which are machines that are made to look like humans. And between the two of them, you're like, where is humanity? Where is that line? What is that thing that makes us us and not just clockwork, right? And of course, if you talk to a neuroscientist, he's like, there's nothing. We're just clockwork. That's all we are. We're neurons firing and doing crazy stuff. Um, and that's science for you. Um, no, no, neuroscience is absolutely fantastically fanatic. Anyway, sorry. The English, not my first language. Bad English, my first language. Uh, so, oh, cyberspace, right? The other big thing. So you've got you know, the blend of the machine and the you know man and machine, and of course that starts getting into the blend of the real world and this cyber world. This artificial reality where we have our second life that we lead, right? You know, we are, we can be a loser in real life, but we can be a total badass in cyberspace because, well, I mean, we can't be a badass in cyberspace. Um, um, and, of course, this is touching back on um, why it's so big, in why cyberpunk shows up in so much Japanese um, <laughs> and manga. Um, and, and literature is because Japan, is, of course, is like the most wired nation on the planet. They have embraced technology like no other nation, um, except, of course, when they're like, nope, we stay traditional. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is, of course, an interesting thing that shows up in cyberpunk, and of course, why cyberpunk comes so naturally to a lot of, of Japanese storytellers is because there is that dichotomy between the super, well, well, sorry, the, the, you've, got the, well, you've got the grungy underbelly of like the dark future, 
um, mixed with the super high technology that, that, that science will provide us right next to the startling lows. You know, this is a thing that shows up in cyberpunk time and time and time again. The rich become incredibly rich and powerful and the poor just drop into the, the, in, into the gutter. You know, people are forgotten by the system. They are left, um, to the, so they, they are marginalized, left pushed to the sidelines. You know, in Akira, you've got the biker gangs who are basically like society's turn their back on them and push them away. And they're just trying to fight for a, a, a point, a stance at the side, make some kind of a, a world for themselves in a society that has said, you're negligible, we can do without you, we're moving on, that's progress. If you can't keep up with us, you're gonna get left behind. Um, and, and so cyberpunk is this, uh, it's a series of contradictions. You've got man and machine, you've got high technology and low technology, you've got um, the very rich and the very poor, and seeing how that chasm in society really, what that says about us as people, which of course what all like, you know, good science fiction does is it asks us questions about our world. It takes aspects of our society and takes them to extremes to extrapolate things about us and what's important. Um, steampunk, however. <laughs> Steampunk's a little different. <laughs> it is kind of like that. Um, so steampunk um, was also developed, was, the, the term steampunk was developed in the 1980s, shortly after cyberpunk became a huge thing. You know, suddenly it, all the hot stuff was the cyberpunk. Um, and, a couple, and at around the same time, uh, a couple of, of, of uh, author, oh, sorry, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm backtracking. I can hear I can hear some of you thinking, but what about you know things people like Jules Verne and H. G. Wells, respectively, for those of you who can't tell. Verne's got that fantastic beard. Um, what about them? Are they steampunk authors? Did they not create steampunk, um, or were they not part of the in, in, you know, beginning of steampunk? Um, some people say yes. And, and certainly their works, if were, they were published new today, would be definitely considered steampunk. But at the time, they were really just speculative fiction. They were, they were proto-science fiction. We hadn't even come up with a term for science fiction um, by that point. So the term science fiction didn't come around until like the 1930s, I think it was. Amazing, really. Um, so while a lot of the, the, the flair and the styling of steampunk is very clear in the works of H.G. Wells and Jules Verne. Um, I do not consider them steampunk themselves because at the time they were just they were doing what every other speculative fiction, science fiction author does and goes, this is the society I know. Let's take that to the next level. Let's see where that would go. And then you get such fantastic things as 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You get the, uh, the time machine. Um, and other such Right, because I have a slide for that. <laughs> I apologize. So you get these fantastic works that are based based on, and, and the way that the people work and the technologies and the style and the aesthetic all get derived from the aesthetic of the time that they were written. Um, so skipping forward to the 1980s, um, a couple of, of um, authors were coming out with um, some interesting works that weren't really like fancy, they weren't high fantasy, they weren't Tolkien-esque works, but they weren't really science fiction either. They were this weird thing, they were kind of set you know, like around the Victorian era, um, and, but they definitely had like a high level of, the, a much higher level of technology. They were kind of a, a weird blend of alternate history meets science fiction and, and 